Hello internet and welcome back to life's biggest questions, the place where no time travelling three headed space dragon can stop us when it comes to laying out a play by play on a hypothetical world destroying kaiju. What's going on guys, as per usual I'll be your disembodied floating voice Jack Finch as we take to the skies and the deep depths of the ocean bed, flee in terror at the sight of a giant monsters all out attack and hope that no one kicks over the cabbage cart and curiously ask the question, what if King Ghidorah was real? Roll the clip. Well, well, how do we even begin when it comes to addressing the Emperor of the Cosmos, the Thousand Year Dragon King, the space super terror beast, King Ghidorah? He's kind of a big deal when it comes to the kaiju, so much so that he's had an incredible six appearances throughout the kaiju franchise, cementing himself as the primary antagonist of the entire universe. It's safe to say that if King Ghidorah was real alongside the myriad of kaiju monsters, then the world would be a much different place. Ever seen Pacific Rim? Yeah, it's time to suit up. Before we jump into that mecha colossus though, you know the drill by now guys, if you're a fan of this video, King Ghidorah, Godzilla, Showa era monster attacks or just LBQ in general, then be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell so you can stay up to date with our latest and greatest uploads. If you'd like to share this video with a friend, then go ahead because you never know when they'll be needing a hypothetical safety protocol to survive a giant monsters all out attack, right? Safety first. King Ghidorah is the big bad baddie of the kaiju world, but sometimes he's a benevolent good guy, so don't let that confuse you. He's a colossal, three-headed, golden wyvern-esque dragon with two large wings, two tails, zero arms and an impenetrable cuirass of golden scales for skin. His first film appearance was in 1964's Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, a Japanese sci-fi kaiju film produced and distributed by Toho, the company synonymous with creating the Godzilla franchise. Since he stepped onto the silver screen, his infamy has skyrocketed as Godzilla's most notorious arch nemesis, making the likes of Mothra, Rodan and Gigan pale in comparison. He's seen an incredibly vast number of incarnations in cinema. In the Showa era as well as the rebirth of Mothra 3, Ghidorah is an all evil space monster solely responsible for wiping out all life on many planets across the universe, often butting heads on earth and being ultimately thwarted by the lizard king himself, Godzilla. In 1991's Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, his origin is the result of three genetically engineered creatures from the future known as Dorats, which were fused together with a nuclear explosion. However, in giant monsters all out attack, King Ghidorah is an ancient Japanese spirit guardian slumbering beneath Mount Fuji and guarded by zealous warriors in the hope that he would one day rise again to defend Japan in their hour of need. In most other scenarios, King Ghidorah would wipe out all life on Earth, like one would take a stroll in a park. He'd hitch up on his asteroid, plow into the planet, exterminate all visible life and then flap off out into the deep depths of space to do it all over again. He's done it with Venus twice, so Earth would be no different. So in essence, the Earth's fate would rely on which incarnation of the great King Ghidorah we had. In one sense, if we had a version of the benevolent thousand year old dragon guardian Ghidorah, then we'd all be pretty cushy, actually. Say if things happened the same way they did in the film and the slumbering King Ghidorah was discovered dormant underground, then the socio-political landscape would be shaken to its core. In the same way that nuclear arms define our global sense of territory, the discovery of an ancient benevolent cosmic beast beneath Japan would put a severe strain on international diplomacy. Heck, just take a look at the way rogue nations deal with nuclear development. In both Iran and North Korea, if there's any sniff of weaponry that could potentially rival the United States, Europe and Russia, then the United Nations comes down on them like a ton of bricks, quicker than a brown fox jumping over a lazy dog, Bob's your uncle, etc, etc. So how the hell do we compare that to a literal cosmic bomb, a creature that can level cities with a mere flap of its wings that's already been proven to be the individual trigger for wiping out all life on Earth throughout the Cretaceous period? Forget your nuclear warheads, King Ghidorah has gravity beams. Even if he remained dormant, his deterrent alone would be more than enough to catapult Japan to the level of global superpower. It's interesting because this is the equivalent to the role of the Futurians throughout the Kaiju franchise, a futuristic sect of humanoids from the 23rd century with the goal of destroying Japan in the past before it can become a corrupt economic superpower in the future. Although in that respect, they use King Ghidorah as a pawn in an attempt to wipe out Japan, but the sentiment would be the same. Japan would be untouchable. That is, unless the rest of the world could act 
actually do something about it. There isn't a lot that happens on our pale blue dot that goes uninterfered without the involvement of either Russia, China or the United States. Throw Europe in there too for safe measure. All of which have relatively sound diplomatic relations with Japan, bar Russia, who still have strained relations surrounding the Kuril Islands dispute, but that's a topic for another time. The point is there isn't any particular reason for Japan to be threatened, or for King Ghidorah to awake from his slumber and defend against invading forces. But still, he remains the same, a deterrent. A trap card that can be played at the opportune moment. Nations advance and global powers rise and fall. We can visibly see it throughout history as technology stutters and starts to catch up. But what if King Ghidorah was real and we throw in a thousand year space dragon that can wreak havoc with a single flap of his wings? Well, it's safe to say that no one would be picking a fight with Japan anytime soon. Unfortunately folks, that's all we've got time for in today's video, cheers for sticking around all the way to the end. If you're a fan of this video then go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and to continue on with your questioning binge, feel free to hit that playlist floating shortly above. As per usual, I've been your host Jack Finch, you've been watching Life's Biggest Questions and until next time, you take it easy.